So tell me about your TPS reports, Ben. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, some exciting news this quarter. Listen well, brother. I I'm listening. Man, every call with this guy. Sorry, folks. Don't be a Ben Buffering. Get it? Ben Buffering? Okay, never mind. Let's chat about our network and how it affects our work from home or remote working experience. When working remotely, we are in charge of our network. We need to ensure that our network will be able to handle all the traffic that is going to be on it during our video conference and ensure that we still have enough bandwidths for a good conferencing experience. Enough room for our audio and video stream and still be able to accommodate the Littles online gaming downstairs or your partner's conference in the adjacent room. We need to place our router in the optimal place and choose the correct network settings for where we are in the house. We also need to determine our network speed with a basic speed test and know what else is trying to occupy bandwidth on our pipe to the outside world. Okay, so I'm a big fan of using a wired connection. I like to see the lights on the switch light up when my machine is plugged in. But what if you're unable to plug into a network or you're using a device that is only capable of wireless communication? That's totally cool. We just have to check a few things to ensure we have the best possible signal from our wireless transceiver. Many routers have multiple network frequencies that they broadcast on, different bands and channels. Most routers nowadays have a 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz band. What band you use is determined by your proximity to the router. If you want better range, use 2.4 GHz. If you need higher performance or speed, use the 5 GHz band. You want to make sure you set up your router to broadcast the different channels clearly. Many routers allow you to choose what band it connects to. Giving the bands different names will make it easier to know which one to join. So how do you know which one to choose? If I'm in the same room or on the same floor in my house as the router, or I have line of sight to that router, I want to use the 5 GHz band. Most of the time, I will give it a name like COVID 5G or something like that. If I'm in a different room or on a different floor in my house, I would want to use the 2.4 GHz band. This might be slower, but will go through walls and floors much better than 5 GHz. The orientation of the wireless router's antenna is also important. I want to make sure it gives me the best possible coverage. If it has outboard antenna, position them in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations listed in the user manual. If your wireless router has internal antenna, Place it so the antenna have the best possible transmission orientation. This might involve laying it on its side or standing it upright. Again, the user manual should have all this information in it. And if it doesn't, a quick search on your favorite search engine should be able to point you and your antenna in the right direction. Once we have our router set up and the antenna positioned correctly, we can start testing our network speed and stability. Before we figure out what speed we're getting, we need to know what speed we need. A quick internet search should be able to tell us how much bandwidth and latency we will need for our particular platform. Once we know what we need, we can do some quick checks of download and upload speeds to see if we meet those needs. The upload is going to be the stream we send out and download is our incoming stream. Sometimes people like Ben Buffering get confused and think, if I disable incoming cameras, they will be able to hear me or see me better. But this isn't always the case. Many times our download stream can be great, but our upload speed can be lacking. This will make it look like we have a good connection on our end, but our far end will not be able to receive our communication clearly. Compare your download and upload bandwidth to what your platform recommends. Also, Try to do a speed test that lets you see how consistent your stream is and doesn't just show you the peak or max of your upload and download stream. I like to test several times a day to see if my internet service provider or my individual network is saturated at specific times or on certain days. Is Monday at 9.30 in the morning a really bad time to have a conference? How about five o'clock on a Friday afternoon? Now, for the big kicker, something not all of the speed tests measure. Latency. Latency is the delay before a transfer of data begins following an instruction for its transfer. Think of it as a lag in your audio and video stream. 
How long is it going to take for my stream to be encoded on my computer or device? Travel to my internet service provider, to my far end's internet service provider, to my far end, and be decoded by their computer or device. If there is too much latency in your transmission, it may cause some uncomfortable or less than exceptional communication. This might result in people talking over each other or not knowing when they should speak. Even if your bandwidth has a great throughput, an increase of latency can kill the flow of your conversation. Usually under 150 milliseconds is a good benchmark to shoot for. If you do happen to go north of 500 milliseconds, you will clearly be able to notice a lag in the conversation. Your network speed doesn't have to be blazing fast. It just needs to be consistent and able to consistently meet the throughput requirements of your platform with acceptable latency. Lastly, we want to be aware of what our computer or device is doing other than supporting our video conference. I want to make sure I'm not running other applications in the background that might be utilizing the bandwidth that I need for my video stream. Many times, we don't think about things like cloud storage and automatic updates, but these other applications are constantly communicating with online servers, sending and receiving updates or even just their statuses. When video chatting, try disabling these updates temporarily and close any unnecessary programs or apps. If you're doing a presentation, download a copy from your cloud storage or server and share the one that is saved locally. That way, every time you advance a slide, it doesn't have to communicate with the cloud server to sync the file that you are using. And for the love of everything holy, turn off automatic updates. Nothing will ruin your conversation or presentation like your machine going into update mode mid-chat. Having a good network connection is key to having a good audio-visual communications experience online. With a little preparation and a little know-how, we should be able to provide the best environment for our software to operate in and our experience to be exceptional. Once you've optimized your network, I don't know, call me maybe? Hey, I just called you. This is crazy, but here's my Zoom link. So call me, maybe. It's hard to look right at you, baby. So here's my team link, and call me, maybe. And I still need that TPS from you, Ben Buffering.